When starting a Minecraft world, one of the hardest things to do is gain XP. So I'm going to show you an extremely simple XP spawner. So easy you could build it within the first few days. So one of the first steps to do this is actually finding an XP spawner. Now you can usually find these pretty easy when searching through caves, as it's quite common you'll actually stumble upon one. When you eventually do find a spawner, what you want to do is start killing the mobs and place a torch on top of the spawner to prevent any more mobs from spawning. Keep fighting off the mobs until all the mobs are dead, and then hopefully you'll have a nice loot chest to raid. But anyway, you can just break this chest and then you can pick up all the items and then just move them outside of the spawner. And here's a quick tip for you, you only have to place a torch on top of the spawner. Beforehand in previous versions, you'd have to light up the whole room or put torches around the whole spawner so no mobs would spawn. But because of the latest update, torches actually got buffed and their light level radius actually got pushed out. So now all you have to do is just one torch on top and it's done. Then you have to identify which kind of spawner it is. There's of course skeletons, zombies, spiders and cave spiders. For this type of early game farm, I would recommend it being skeletons or zombies. The reason for this is when you're working with spiders or cave spiders, they actually tend to just climb up the wall and they clog up the system. They're a real pain, so it's much easier to just go for skeletons or zombies. So anyway, the next step is to actually clear out the room. We're going to use the spawner as the centre of the room and you want to go four blocks out in each side and make sure it's cleared on every side. So as you can see I'm going four blocks here and then four blocks on the next side and the next side and also you want to make sure there's at least a two block high below and above the spawner. So once you've determined the radiuses and how far the blocks are you can just completely mine out all the cobblestone and the mossy cobble and keep doing this until we've got a nice sized room just like this. The great thing about this farm is you can actually do it with really poor tools like stone. Yes it may take longer with stone tools but you can still do it and Either way, it's just as efficient in the end. So once we've mined out the room and we've got four blocks at least on every single side, at least two blocks above and two blocks below, then the next step is to make an infinite water source. And you simply do this by mining three blocks in a row, placing water on the left side and water on the right side. And then if you pick up water from the center, that will create an infinite water source. So then we want to go and place water in the corner of one of the back walls. And then you just want to place a water source block every other block. Because when you leave a gap, the one in the middle will become a source block. So just place water down every other block on the back wall. Now the location that you are placing this water is going to be the back of the spawner. So the actual collection place will be at the front. So just keep that in mind when building. And hopefully you've got something like this where the water all comes to an abrupt end here. And we've got one line of stone just left. You can go ahead and mine one deep on that line of stone and you can place either water at the right side or the left side, it doesn't matter. And just allow it to keep flowing until it stops. At the location of where it stops, you want to mine one down and then head inside an extra two blocks. So it's a free long wall. And once you've got something like this, you just want to place water on the back side underneath where the stream stopped previously. And then you want to dig inside and you just want to keep going until the water stream once again stops. And where the water stops will be our new location for where we will kill all our mobs or as I like to call it the kill chamber so when you're here just go down four blocks like this and mine out a little room okay so just look up and see which side the water comes from and you just want to place a double chest right here with a hopper connected on the left side of it and then you can go ahead and just clear out a bit more space so that it's not so claustrophobic in here and see this farm's actually a starter farm it's actually really quite good so I would recommend putting maybe six double chests down here so just mine out a nice hole like this and then you just want to place some double chests down and then on the left hand side of course just place some hoppers and then we can place some ladders to get out of this hole and then just fill it in as we only need access to the right hand side of the chests and as you can see it will fall all the way down to the bottom chest when you put something in it and these will stack from the bottom up so there's actually a few different methods to kill the mobs you can use your standard campfire which works fine and will allow you to be afk and automatically kill mobs and you'll harvest either the bones and the arrows or the rotten flesh if you've got a zombie spawner but if you have been to the nether i would recommend using a soul campfire because this actually kills the mobs much quicker than the original campfire so there's a nice little tip for you by the way if you are enjoying this video make sure to leave a like and double check down below that you're subscribed to the channel 
So once we've got our killing room, we obviously need a way to access the surface. So just pick one of the corners and then start mining up and then place your ladders and then just keep going until you hit the top of the surface. Depending on how deep you are will determine how long it's going to take you to mine up to the surface of course. But once you do make it to the top, I'd recommend grabbing a bucket of water as you can make a much quicker way to get down rather than climbing down all the ladders. And that's by making a plunge pull right next to the ladder. So you just want to mine down in a one by one format until you go all the way down to your killing chamber and then all you need is a hole with a one by one of water and this is enough to save you from the drop and we can test this out by jumping into the hole and just hug the wall where the ladder is and as you can see we'll fall straight down into the water and we'll be completely fine just like that our next step is to get rid of the torch on top of the spawner so you want to climb the ladders and you want to count 10 blocks high and once you've hit 10 blocks you can just mine out and then you just want to go two blocks in and then turn left towards the spawner and keep mining until you hopefully hit the center of the spawner as you can see I've got this big hole in the wall to the left hand side which could allow mobs to escape and could also let light into the spawner which will reduce our spawn rates. So you want to go ahead and block up that wall. Now you just want to head up back up to the hole you've just made. Get rid of the cobblestone blocks because we don't need them. They're just going to block the spawns. And then you just want to go and break the torch on top of the spawner. But as soon as you do this, you want to make sure you place a slab on top of the spawner. And this is hopefully going to prevent mobs from spawning on top of the spawner. And then as soon as you've done this, hopefully get inside very quickly before the mobs start attacking you. Because they will likely spawn very quickly. As you can see, it's quite interesting to see the route that the actual mobs will take. So as you can see the mobs are going to be picked up by the water system and they're going to be taken all the way down to our kill chamber and as long as you are within 16 blocks of the spawner they will continue to spawn. So if you've actually found a double spawner near each other make sure you build the kill chamber in the center because you need to be within 16 blocks of both spawners. But make sure you get rid of all the torches that could be affecting spawn rates. As you can see as soon as I've got rid of that torch the skeletons have spawned and they've been pushed straight down into the system. There's absolutely nothing they can do and they're gonna land on top of the soul campfire and they will automatically be killed and all the loot will head down to this bottom chest. So you want to go up top and block the this off to prevent light coming in. So at the moment we are getting no XP from this spawner and all we're going to be getting is loot items. So in order to get XP you have to have the final hit and kill the mob. So what you can do is allow the mob to take a little bit of damage from the campfire and then just swing a sword and hopefully you'll get the XP. If you're not bothered about the XP though you can actually just hide at the back of the room and as long as you're within 16 blocks of the spawner the mobs will continue to flow down the stream and then be killed by the campfire and then you can collect all their loot. Personally I prefer this design without the campfire so what you can do is place two slabs down so that none of the skeletons can shoot you and then get rid of the campfire and what you can do is you can simply just afk and allow the mobs to stack up and then you can kill them all at once and gain tons of xp. But just be warned that on java you can only have 24 mobs in a single space before they actually start dying of entity cramming. On bedrock I don't believe that's actually a thing so they should just be able to just stack up forever and ever. And this is actually great for both survival and multiplayer worlds because there's usually a cap to how many mobs can spawn in the world which would stop this farm from working but this doesn't actually affect mobs spawning from a spawner so this spawner will always work. Another cool tip you can do is you can go up top and create a viewing room for the spawner because if you didn't know tinted glass doesn't actually allow any light to pass through it so this gives us a way to view our mobs being spawned without affecting the spawn rates. Anyway let me know if you're going to be building this before you leave make sure you check out this video because it's a, such a good video and you're going to really enjoy it. Without further ado I will see you there.